Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and welcome to the PreSonus Studio One Beginner's Guide. These series of videos are intended to help the absolute beginner whether you're coming from another DAW or whether you've never used any DAW before and you're just getting into using Studio One. These series of videos are gonna help you get up and running as quick and easily as possible with no fuss and no muss to help you navigate your way through Studio One, set up a basic song file and give you a basic overview of all the more common features used in Studio One, both for recording music and for mixing music. Once you've watched this entire series here on YouTube and you want to take your mixing or your recording to the next level, I highly recommend that you check out these three training courses on my website at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. You want to check out Recording in Studio One Artist Made Easy, Mixing in Studio One Made Easy Volume One, and Mixing in Studio One Made Easy Volume Two. Those three courses are designed to help you go from what you're going to learn in these free set of videos and actually help you start making music and mixing music in your home studio. The links will be in the description box below, and there's also a 25% discount coupon that you can use at checkout to get 25% off any one of the courses I just mentioned. So thanks for joining me in this series, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, everyone, in this video, we're gonna take a look. Um, we're gonna start over the next few videos, actually. We are gonna start looking at all the different um, sections, if you will, of where you're gonna spend 99% of your time, which is inside of the edit screen here and inside of the console view. So I'm gonna close this for a second. The first thing I wanna show you is the browser. So we're in our um, song file that we created a couple of videos back. Um, if we go down here to the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see three buttons, browse, mix, and edit. We're gonna start with the browse. We're gonna click our browser. And we can resize this just by dragging this open here so we can see it a little bit better. Here again is where you're gonna spend a lot of time when using Studio One. Let's walk through the browser and show you how it's laid out. It's pretty simple. So across the top here, we have a little home button that we can uh, click here. Um, and from the home button, you can see we have different, um, different sections of the browser. We have our instruments, our effects, our loops, files, anything to do with the cloud, the PreSonus cloud, and the pool. And you'll see that is also labeled across the top near the home button, instruments, effects, loops, files, cloud, and pool, okay? Down here at the bottom, you have, um, you can uh, re-index presets, which we'll talk about in another video. You don't need to worry about that right now. And we'll look at, in the plugin manager, we'll talk about in a second. So let's start off with uh, instruments. We'll click our instruments. Now here is where you're gonna have all your software instruments both your PreSonus and any third-party uh, VSTs that you've installed on your computer. As you can see, if you click this little down uh, arrow here, here's all the PreSonus VSTs that come with PreSonus Studio One, depending on the version of Studio One that you're running, whether it's Prime, uh, Artist, or, or Professional, you may have more or less, but here they are nevertheless. Uh, underneath that, I have um, some by Slate Digital, and I also have some by TuneTrack, Easy Drummer. Okay, so all your VST instruments will all be located under the Instruments tab. You also have uh, multi-instruments here that is part of Studio One. You have some note effects here, other instruments here. Again, these are all part of Studio One Professional. Some may come with Artist and Prime, some may not. So you may have a few less choices than I do. You also have a favorites where you can save um, your favorite instruments to a favorites folder so you don't need to navigate through the different folders every time you want to find a plugin or an instrument. And then the most recent ones that you opened will be here as well, okay? So play around a little bit with that. You can also sort them. Right now we're looking at them by vendor. You can also um, flatten them out where it'll show all of them here. You can look at it by folder. You can do it by vendor or you can do it by the type of instrument. Okay. So again, just different ways to view it. Click around there, see what works for you. And that's that. Next to this, we also have next to the instruments tab, we have our effects tab. Now here's where all your plugins are going to reside both PreSonus and all your third-party plugins. They'll all be here by folders, like you, I'm looking at them by vendor type, so they're listed by vendor, FabFilter, Liquid Sonics, Plugin Alliance, PreSonus, so on and so forth. If I click on the little triangle, you'll see all the plugins here, okay? And again, you can sort them and look at them by folders, you can look at them by vendor, you can look at them by the type of plugin, whether it's a, a VST2, VST3, I typically look at them by vendor, but again, whatever works for you, you should check that out. 
all of our loops are next to our vent, uh, our effects is our loops. If there's any loops installed on your system, they will all be here. Now the one, you'll see I don't have any here and because I didn't install the loops. So one of the questions I get from new Studio One owners is that they don't have any loops here. And they go, why don't I have any loops here? I thought Studio One came with a bunch of loops depending on the version that you've purchased. And it does. You have to make sure that it's it's not part of the Studio One application. It's an additional download that is within your presonus.com user account. If you go to your presonus account, log in and look under your software uh, for your products, you ought to see your license and your Studio One version that you purchased that you registered with presonus. And there's also a tab under there that says download additional content. The loops are all under the download additional content. Okay, so when you download them, it'll be in the loops section here. Now, again, depending on the version of Studio One that you have, Prime, Artist, or Professional will come with more or less loops. And depending on when you're watching this video, that all can change. You know, these companies change things from time to time, so just be aware of it. I don't have any loops on my system because I didn't download all the additional content because I personally don't use the loops that come with Studio One, so I didn't want to clog up my, uh, my hard drive with it but that's where they would be located. Same thing with any third party loops that you may purchase. It'll be under the loop section, okay? Next to that is files. Now files is gonna give you an, uh, a kind of a top level navigation of your computer and or any external drives you have hooked up to your computer so you can easily find um, files or WAV or audio files to import into Studio One. So as you can see, I have my desktop here and then I have all the folders on my desktop here. Um, you know, and if you want to import a file into Studio One, like we did here, uh, uh, this acoustic guitar, you can just go to your, um, to your hard drive, find the folder that you have, and you can just left click and drag the audio in. So all of this file section is just a, a hierarchy of your computer and all its internal drives and the external drives you have hooked up to it. And your yours will look a little different than mine, obviously, and you can navigate through there, okay? So when you wanna import files, you're gonna to come to the files menu, okay? Next to that is the cloud. This is all the uh, this is the different uh, stuff that you can access through the cloud to get to the PreSonus. So if you want to purchase some additional PreSonus packs that work with Studio One, you can go right to the PreSonus shop and you can sign in. When I click PreSonus shop, it's going to ask me to sign in, which is the same username and password you use to log into your My PreSonus account on PreSonus.com. So I did that here. Now I can I can uh, I can go ahead if I want to purchase some loops here. I can see there's a bunch of loops here, okay? So if let's say I wanted to purchase the, the this 20th century since box set volume one, you just highlight it and you'll see down at the bottom, it says, here's what it costs, $19.99. I can buy it here. And if you have a credit card hooked up to your account, you can buy it directly from your cloud here within Studio One. So you don't need to go to presonus.com to purchase additional things that presonus offers. You could do it right within the browser, which is very, very cool. Makes it real easy to get things. Okay, so here's all the Studio One loops that I can purchase. Here's a bunch of plugins if you wanna purchase any of their plugins. So for example, if I wanted to purchase say their Console Shaper Pro, here it is, $79.99. You can buy it and it'll download it directly in Studio One. Real easy to do. Very handy. I love this. I don't use it a lot, but when I want to buy something from the PreSonus shop, I can do that. You also have the PreSonus Exchange. Now, again, I got to sign in to the Exchange. I'm going to accept it. Now, the Exchange is where user uh, users of Studio One will update, th will upload things like presets and effects chains, and these are all free, by the way. Different grooves, if you wanted to, uh, like different drum beats and things like that, that you can maybe use. Um, you could download it all from the Exchange. So this is like a user community, kind of a freeware to, for all the PreSonus users that create different things that can be used with Studio One. You can get them right from the Exchange, right from the browser. And then lastly, you have your SoundCloud. We talked about this in a couple of videos ago. I don't have my SoundCloud um, account hooked up to Studio One quite yet, but if you wanted to record and mix your song and upload it to your SoundCloud account, you can do that directly from here in Studio One, which again is pretty handy if you wanna release music to the web. Okay, so that is the cloud area. Again, very handy. I urge you to take some time and then go through it. 
Lastly, we have what's called the pool. Now the pool is nothing more than just like a container for all the files that are be using that you're using in the current session that you have both ones that are that are um, visible on the um, on the edit screen and ones that have been deleted. So as you can see here in this session, we only have one acoustic guitar track that we imported a couple of videos ago and you see that it shows up in the pool here and you can highlight it and you can uh, audition it right from here if you wanted to, okay? Or you can just highlight it and play and you can do it right from the edit screen. But what I wanna show you is, let's say I duplicate this track and let's say we had a couple of tracks here. Let me just right click and duplicate the track here. Oop. Let me, uh, let, me, let me remove that and do this again. I wanna duplicate complete, which will bring the audio. Okay, so now I have two acoustic guitar tracks. Okay. And if I refresh the pool here, how do I do that? I think I go to cloud, go back to the pool. How do I refresh? Right click and refresh. And it should show two, oh, do I have to save it first? Probably have to save it first. It's only showing one track. It ought to show, I wanted to show you something here. It ought to show both my acoustic tracks. I'm not sure why it's not showing both tracks. Maybe because it's duplicated. Um, let me just go ahead and let me import another I want to show you something here that's important to realize about the pool here. So if I come back to uh, the pool, if I go to files, and if I want to import a different audio, uh, a different uh, wave file, let me just find something here. Let me just grab this wave file, drag it into the session here. Left click, click and drag, and now you can see I have a snare track. So if I go back to the pool, you'll see now that I have two files here. It's probably because I duplicated it, it shows up as one. Um, so now I have a snare and I have an acoustic guitar. If I were to delete, let me remove one. If I were to delete this snare track from the edit screen, it doesn't leave the pool. So the pool is a container for all the files that you have currently in your session that you're working on and files that you have deleted. So if you wanna go back and re-get them and bring them back into your session, you can. So if I refresh this, you'll see, and I just right clicked in here, hit refresh, and the snare track still shows up here. The reason why it shows up here is because it's in the pool. If I wanted to bring it back into Studio One, because let's say I deleted it from my project inadvertently, and now I decide I want that snare track. Well, you can just highlight it, left click, and drag it right back in and it'll put it back into your session, okay? So think of the pool as nothing more than a container for any current used tracks or tracks that you used and deleted in your session at that particular time, okay? That's what the pool is, okay? So that is the browser in a nutshell here. Um, we will come back in the next video and you can, again, you can resize the browser just by left clicking and dragging this here. We'll come back in the next section. We'll talk about the mixer and the edit screen. But go ahead, open up your browser, and you just open and close it by clicking here. You use it when you need it, when you don't need it. And go through the different tabs here, and go check out all the different things inside of the browser. And I'll see you guys in the next video.